Okay. But we're fighting it. What is the problem with calling a person uh, that we would call a terrorist a militant or a, a freedom fighter? I see that a lot in the news. Um, why is that not appropriate to call a, a terrorist a freedom fighter or a militant? Well, it doesn't matter whether someone's cause is good or bad. If you harm civilians um, anywhere, you are a terrorist and nothing but that. There should be no difference between a, a person who harms civilians who blows up a bus in London. Um, the media calls that person a terrorist, while if um, that same person blows up a pizzeria or or, or, a kills, bus. or, or a bus or yeah. kills civilians, ba children in their beds. In Israel, many, some media outlets refer to th them as a terrorist. This is a blatant double standard, and we must, again, constantly make the media aware of this double standard, okay. which camera has been doing. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I came up with the, uh, the terms freedom fighter and militants. What are some other terms out there that are really inappropriate uh, that I haven't mentioned? Um, well, activist is another common term. You've probably, um, I have probably heard that. Yeah, heard a lot. Um, another problem is Hamas. Sometimes the media will refer to Hamas as a group that is against the occupation, um, mm. and not without making clear that these groups are really against the entire occupation of Israel, against the existence of Israel. Um, a third, a third problem is when the media interviews. Uh, terrorists and the terrorist tells the media outlet that he's against the killing of of all civilians um, it, what without making clear without he or the media outlet making clear that this guy is against the kill that this guy does not consider any any Israelis civilians yeah that's there, a big problem a, there's a rationale piece to that where they say well eventually these babies are going to serve as soldiers in the IDF the Israeli Defense Force so we'll just consider them as non-civilians right now I've heard that uh, right. rationale for, for that kind of thing. So it's very important to understand what is being said when, when someone says the occupation, the occupation. Um, they might be meaning any square inch in the area that we call Israel. Right. So we have to um, s ask them, what do you mean by, by the occupation? By the so-called occupation, yeah. exactly. Yeah. OK. Um, one of the uh, I don't know, hip hip uh, hypocritical type of things that I've seen that you touched upon was, for example, um, when uh, Musab al zarqawi was recently uh, assassinated, um, we applauded. Uh, he was an uh, enemy to the United States. He was uh, killing a lot of people in Iraq. But I noticed that um, Sheikh Ahmad Yassin, who was also a terrorist in Israel, um, w was, uh, the, the uh, Israelis were severely criticized for his uh, assassination. Can you shed some light on that? Sure. When, when Zakari was killed by the U.S. earlier this month, I think June 6th or 7th or so, mm -hmm. it was widely applauded by the media, the U.S. media. The media, I mean, was ecstatic, celebrating. Yet when Israel carries out the same policy and kills a Palestinian terrorist leader, often many columnists and reporters will condemn Israel for this exact same behavior, which is a double standard and um, Actually, on June 8th, Camera sent out an um, email alert to its letter writers, urging them to contact the media, providing all the email addresses and phone numbers of the different media outlets to alert them to this double standard and to urge news readers to be aware of the double standard mm, terror and not terror. stand for it. Right. Exactly. I think a lot of the news um, picked up on the fact that he was a paraplegic, uh, to draw some sympathy to him. He was an old man. You know, why do you? Killing an old man for you know right, Bin Laden's also getting <laughs> old. So, <laughs> <laughs> but this old man mm -hmm. killed a lot of people, babies and pregnant women, and people that had great high hopes for life as well. All right, what are, can you give me three examples of the you know the three slam dunks, the the best uh, corrections that your organization has made in the news? Oh, uh, okay. The first example I'd say is the issue of UN Resolution 242. Um, United, Nez United Nations Resolution 242 calls for Israel, Israel to withdraw from territories acquired in the 1967 war. Now, this resolution calls for Israel to withdraw from territories, but not all territories mm -hmm. acquired. And the founder and the drafters of this res this um, leaving out all was not w this was an intent this was intentional because the drafters of UN Resolution 242 knew that Israel. It 
could not maintain a viable state if they had to withdraw from all the territories, including East Jerusalem. Including East Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, often outlets would use Resolution 242 as a pretext for um, for insisting Israel must withdraw from all territories. We've had numerous corrections: New York Times, Boston, Boston Globe, um, you, you name it, from all kinds of papers on this issue. And very rarely do we see this mistake anymore, only by the extreme anti-Israel um, okay. advocates. In other words, this territory is subject um, to negotiation because it was, it was wars involved. And uh, so, therefore, a little clause was left there as far as what exact amount would be returned. And today we see major Jewish population centers around Jerusalem that probably will remain part of the sovereign state of, of Israel. Um, that would be probably the reason that they anticipated that there would be some um, communities around Jerusalem and um, major population centers. Right. Mm, the second um, big correction camera, when I say big correction, I mean we've consistently corrected this problem and you see less of the problem today, would be Reuters labeling Hamas as a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. um, before Reuters would um, label Hamas as a terrorist organization, um, Waging, waging an uprising against Israel in the in Gaza and the West Bank, um, which is not true. Hamas is sworn to Israel's destruction and trying to destroy Israel. Now um, Reuters and for all the um, outlets that pick up Reuters refer to Hamas as um, a group sworn to Israel's destruction. I see. So it wasn't uh, initially they called uh, the Hamas a terrorist organization because that's the way we, they were regarded. Now they add in the clause, a terrorist organization sworn on the destruction of Israel. Well, Hamas was always was labeled a terrorist organization by the U.S. government. But no, but initially the media would refer to Hamas as a group um, seeking, uh, waging an uprising for I a see. state in, in the West Bank and Gaza. Oh, okay. And now okay. they're referred to very strongly as a group um, seeking the destruction of Israel. Okay, okay. That's very important. They're not just seeking a state, but they are, they say in their, their right. charter right. that we want to destroy Israel. We don't have to read anybody's lips. They say, we want to destroy Israel. Exactly. There's no part that we need to misunderstand. Unfortunately. <laughs> so if they the say case. it, we can certainly say it uh, uh, about them. Right. Okay. And uh, we ought to, uh, because you could have terrorists like the IRA that have uh, used those, employ those uh, terrorist means, but are not, they're not claiming that they want to take over Great Britain. They might be claiming that they want certain parts of um, um, English people out of northern Ireland, um, but they're not, you know, bent on the destruction of a particular right. country. Okay. The third one would be. Um, the third one would be Peter Jennings and ABC News. Although he, uh, Jennings has um, died recently, he has a reputation for being one of the harshest critics of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, We've obtained many, one of the most biased newsmen, we've obtained many corrections from Peter Jennings and ABC on different, um, different points. Um, once we even, uh, Pete Jennings even um, said on the air that an is a Palestinian baby died at an Israeli checkpoint due to delays at the checkpoint. Um, we, got, we got ABC to correct this um, error on air, and mm -hmm. um, even the pal even the mother of the baby said this wasn't the case. So, and we mm -hmm. feel as a result of all the corrections we've obtained from ABC, ABC as a network is, and from Peter Jennings and ABC, ABC as a network is much less biased today with regard to Israel and more willing to look at the facts without just taking a story. Um, yeah, for real. So these um, the standards you're forcing the standards in the news to be wholesome, to be honest, to right? Be to accurate. stick to the facts. Yeah. Opinions, how, how does the expression go? Facts don't lie. That's right. Only opinions uh, can taint or twist things. But a fact is a fact. Uh, okay. Now, you are, this is your job. You are a professional uh, working, as we had mentioned, uh, the regional director of camera in New York. Um, so you've seen a lot. You, you've been in the field with uh, the media and the news. Share some words of wisdom to our viewers of how we can be more discerning, more uh, adept, at uh, getting an accurate picture from the media. Okay, there are, well, there are, where to begin? There are a number of things you can do. First, it's important to look for what's not there. Mm -hmm. um, if there's a terrorist attack or 
no matter what happens, if you're looking at an article, is the Israeli um, point of view being shared? Is there um, is there an Israeli spokesperson with his point of his or her point of view allowing him to respond to allegations made against Israel mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. news or in an article? 